are Dwayne and Donna Patrick at Sunset Hill Tree Farm um, in Alvarado, Texas. And so we are working, we, we spoke to our county extension agent about um, during this pandemic and quarantine and all this stuff, doing some educational part pieces um, for the in, in, in association with the extension agency. And so um, this will be one of them that we will use for that, but it's on our YouTube channel. Um, also, because it's something that we both are very, very interested in and passionate about, and it's chickens. So, as this whole crisis has played out, people have come to find that they um, are not as food secure as they thought they were. And uh, those who can, and almost everybody can, um, and who want to, um, have looked into other ways of making sure that they have food provided at their own homes. So gardening and things like that, but chickens. Chickens are an easy um, and a pretty inexpensive way to make sure that you have eggs every day, um, and then you have meat if you choose to go that route. Uh, but there's a lot to know. And so we're gonna do uh, this little video called Chicken 101. So uh, we are first and foremost a Christmas tree farm. Um, that's what we grow. But we have chickens, pigs, cows, rabbits, Cat, turkeys, turkeys, ducks, ducks, cats, lots of cats, and um, and so chickens. We have a lot of chickens, and so we deal with the the chickens. We hatch our own eggs. And we sell chickens. We collect the eggs. We sell the eggs, and so we have a lot of of experience in that place. So let's. But, however, however, disclaimer. This is a disclaimer. Okay, disclaimer. We are not the foremost experts on. Absolutely chickens. not. No, we're we just not. have a common sense knowledge. Uh, I mean, just from experience. Okay, well, he's he's read a lot of books too. Yeah, uh, but you've read a lot of books. I've read a lot of books, and we've raised. He's raised a lot of chickens. I've only raised a few chickens. He's raised lots of chickens. So yes, but it is experience, common sense. We are not by any means experts or masters of any of this. And so, let's start talking about the different types of chickens that you can choose. Well, uh, you can you can uh, break them up into different groups. You can go with uh, the egg layers. Um, the egg layers are kind of that's what a lot of people that's all they want is just the egg layer. So they will get that type of chicken that lays a lot of eggs. Um, if you get a chicken to lay probably about anywhere two fifty to even all the way up to, to maybe three hundred eggs a, a year, you're doing great. So uh, they don't lay every day, but sometimes they'll go and spurs and they will lay every day for a while and they may miss a day or two. But uh, like the uh, leggers, you call them leghorns, I call them leggers. I'm from the I south. I don't call them leghorns, it's, that's how they're spelled. So if somebody's wanting to look up yeah, what a leghorn is, it's going to be spelled leghorn. Yeah, but this is Texas. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, the, uh, something in there may be silent, so it's leggers. <laughs> So uh, anyway, that's probably the biggest uh, variety for egg layers uh, that you can get. Um, they're a rather smaller bird, solid white. Uh, they do stand out, that, and, and we'll talk about this other, uh, a little bit later about uh, predators. White stands out pretty good. So um, Australarps, they're black. They are they, they do okay around here, but they get really hot in the summertime, and when they get hot, they don't want to lay. But they do lay a lot of eggs. Barred rocks uh, are good. Production reds, cinnamon queens. Of course, we talked about the leggers. Uh, the Rhode Island reds, New Hampshire reds, Buff Orpingtons. Buff Orpingtons are a good egg layer, uh, especially in the wintertime. Uh, the length of days, and we'll get onto this later, the length of day, light affects the productivity of your your egg layers the Delawares the Morans or some people call them cuckoo Morans cuckoo cuckoo cuckoo, <laughs> cuckoo Morans the Jersey Giants uh, they're they're a, a large breed chicken wine dots Cochins and and the white rocks they're all good good layers now you would want to do your research in there because some birds are more flighty than others. Some lay a bigger egg than others. Some are brown leg, uh, egg layers, brown, white egg layers. And uh, the Americana, which is a, um, uh, they kind of a turquoise to a blue colored egg. Mm -hmm. that they'll lay. They're called the Easter eggers. Cause East, they, yeah. Cause they, I mean, but they're Americanas. 
And you can pick them out because they have a little tough thing. But and then there's the Dominics. Now, uh, if you're from the South and you say Leggerns, you'll say Dominickers. <laughs> Anybody that's been around chickens for any, any length of time have called the Dominics Dominickers. That's, okay. That's Dominickers. That's not how it's spelled. Well, it doesn't matter. It's okay. how, it's, it's, how it's, <laughs> it's, it's said. So, uh, now another category of uh, chicken is uh, if you're going for meat... Um, if that's all you want is, is to eat the chickens, uh, the, of course, the biggest, biggest breeds for that is the Cornish rocks and they're specifically bred. Some people think they're genetically modified and I guess to a degree, maybe they are because they're bred for just the meat. So they're going to have this really huge breast and these really fat legs and they'll go from chick, uh, from brand new mm -hmm. chick to, um, the size that you want to butcher them for in about 10, 10 weeks. That's so that's, fast. That's real, it's real quick. That's fast. Uh, the, the problem with them is that, that they grow so fast that sometimes their legs can't support, either, support the body weight. That's sad. So if you go out there and you have a chicken that can't really get around, well, it's grown so fast and got so heavy that the legs couldn't support it. Wow. Uh, that's, that's one of the bad things. But they do grow fast, and you can have a, uh, you be eating your fried chicken, in 10 weeks. Fried chicken. Uh, there's Freedom Rangers, the Red Broilers, and there's the Black Broilers that, that you can grow that grow a little bit slower. Uh, it takes them longer to get to the freezer, which that's the ultimate goal if you're growing them for just for me. Now, what I like is what we call a dual purpose, that they lay a lot of eggs and they're big enough that, they, that you can eat them. Yeah. So that's the ones I like. So uh, there's a lot of hybrids that are dual purpose. They got the red, the black, and the gold uh, sex links. Uh, there's uh, California whites and grays. There's production blues and reds. Uh, Buff Orpingtons. They're they're a real meaty bird. Um, they're 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 a, a goldish color or yellow color, and and they're so fluffy. They look so much bigger mm -hmm. than they actually they look, are. I know because we have one out there, right? Yeah. And she's she looks huge. She looks really, really big. But you so grab huge. her, then it just like sinks yeah. in like a pillow. So, <laughs> uh, but anyway, the, the Buff Orpingtons are good. Rhode Island Reds are good. Jersey Giants are great. Uh, now they're slow growers, and they they are slower to get to mature age. So even in their egg laying, they're a little bit slower. The wine dots, the white rocks, barred rocks, and buckeyes. Buckeyes. Yeah, Buckeyes. From it's not Ohio? that they're. Uh, I don't know if they're from Ohio. They could be. I don't know. And Brahmas. Now, if you're talking about the bull, it's Bramer. <laughs> I'm from the South. It's Bramer. They spell Brahman. Well, whatever. It's Bra Brahmas is the chicken. But I know we call the bulls Bramer. Yeah, that brings us up to the ornamental. The now, fancy chickens. Fancy. Fancy chickens. We need fancy. Like they're fancy. Like my silkies are fancy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the fancy chickens, uh, they're special specialty breeds. They're what people buy just for a specific trait that they like about them. Like she says, her, her silkies. And they're really, they almost look like fur. Uh, they don't look like feathers at all. But they are feathers and they're just real fine and frilly and uh, they got them all over, and even down their legs. And they're they're a bantam, and we'll get into bantams in just a minute. But the the sal salmon federals, have you ever heard of those? Yep. Nope. Uh, cuckoo morans, people cuckoo. like those. You do that every time <laughs> I say cuckoo. Morans. You'd be a good club. Uh, cuckoo morans, uh, they they lay the darkest egg. It's the darkest brown. I mean, they they are super super dark brown. Well, summer silver and gold penciled Hamburgs. Now we've got some some uh, silver spangled Hamburgs. Uh, they're pretty cool, but they're flighty. They're pretty. They were weird. Yeah, um, they take a little bit longer to, to develop, I think, and, and it took them longer to start laying eggs. But mm -hmm. they're cool to have. Polish breeds. Polish breeds have the 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 hair days. Oh, okay. They have the big thing. Yeah. 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 So the Houdans and the Sultans, uh, they're all they're all or ornamentals, and then we get into the Bantams. She'll tell you the difference in the what one of the main differences in Bantams, true Bantams and and, uh, and regular breeds is how many toes they have. 
How many toes? Bantams are going to have five toes. And uh, your regular breed chickens are going to have four. And so when you look at a silky or a cochin, one of those, you're going to find the five little toes down there. And that's not including your spur on your roosters. I mean, there's still that's going to be extra. But so five toes. It's pretty interesting. So the bantams, if you like the bantams, and, and especially people like to show them, I'm not really into the show part of them. It would be fun. I've done it before. I did it back in high school. But uh, there's a lot of stiff competition. And if you got into that, you'd probably want to get the book of the standard for of Standards of Perfection. Yeah, but that's a lot to say. Say it again. Standards of Perfection. Say it three times fast. Standards of Perfection. Standards of Perfection. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be done. Okay, so uh, it'll be like the silkies, like we have cochins, the silver duck wings, the black and the white Japanese. Now they're pretty cool. But you can show any kind of chicken, right? Yeah, you can show any of them. Yeah. But they, they're standards of perfection for all of them. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. Including a turkey. A turkey? Have you ever seen a turkey? No. You've seen a turkey. Well, called. I've eaten a turkey. No, you, a you ate a turkey. Du a, a tur <laughs> say turducken. A turducken. <laughs> You ate you ate a turducken. No, you didn't need a turkey. What's a turkey? It's a naked neck. Oh, I've seen those. I have seen those. I saw they're, them on that video. They're ugly. Yeah. They they have no feathers on their head down to the the back. It's just just a they're naked neck. They're supposed to neck. be really sweet, but they look like something got after them. Yeah, it's like no. <laughs> um. But you, I mean, you can show everything. You've got the the Belgian quail, the mille de fleur, uh, mille fleur de, 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 de whatever. And then the white faced black Spanish, the sea brights, and and all. And, and look, there's there is, I just we just give you an overview of chickens. There's tons of different kinds mm -hmm. of chickens. Thousands. Is there? Of breeds. Uh, is there thousands? Probably. I don't think there's not thousands. I don't think it's not thousands. Okay, hundreds. Maybe hundreds. Maybe a hundred. But I, I know a ton. A hundred. A hundred is a lot. Well, I know, but I believe there's at least that many. And then they have what we, what I like to call, mutts. And then we have a lot of those. Mutts. We have mutts. They are crossbred from everything. We have hens we like, and we have a rooster yeah. that we like, and uh, none of the roosters. same breeds. Not none of them are the same breed. No. So we love, but I like our mutts. They're fun. They're, well, they hey, they like, and yeah. they taste just like fried chicken when you fry them up. <laughs> and, and you know what is? You know, I say frog legs taste like chicken. Well, mutts taste like chicken. Taste like chicken. Yeah, because they are chicken. And they fry up just about the same. Just like chicken. This brings us to what works best for you. Well, let's see. I like to get up in the mornings and then <laughs> have my breakfast. No, this brings us to the part. About picking the chicken that works oh, best for you. Yes, though, no, yes. <laughs> okay, I thought you was getting personal at the same. Uh, each breed has, um, you know, you have to you have to consider where you live. Right. We're in the south. Where you live? Where, where I live? I live here. You live here. And it gets hot. And we live in the country, and that matters because where matters. you live also are you in the city? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So where you live is important. What do you want to do with them? Well, I want to eat them and have egg layers. Okay. But so, uh, first of all, it gets hot in the south, really hot. So, even though we have some black chickens, I already understand that when it gets hot, they're gonna get lethargic and they're not gonna they're not gonna want to lay. Okay. So, uh, if you live in Alaska and you wanted chickens, there's a couple of things that's gonna mess you up up there. Okay. Length of daylight. Yes, that's gonna be a problem. Because you gotta have that a chicken needs at least fourteen. I believe it's fourteen. Y'all can look this up. Y'all can read some of them books that I read. Uh, fourteen, at least fourteen hours of daylight per day uh, for them to lay eggs. So uh, in the winter time, it, the length of days gets shorter, so their egg productivity Gosh. starts to drop. Except for a couple of breeds, like I said, the buff orchid, because they they are they're a good winter winter layer. Um, so, if you're up north, of course, the blacker the darker chickens are going to be doing better up there because they they're, they won't get they, you know the heat thing. I mean, right. down here the darker ones they get like I said they get lethargic they don't want they don't want to. Uh, 
lay so much in, in the heat. Um, cold, if you live in the cold areas, uh, there are chickens like the leggards. She says leg horns. I don't say it. I spell it that way. Well, well what do you, how do you, how do you say it? Leggard. Leggard. Oh, you're leggard. from the south. Good girl. <laughs> she's, a, she's, she's from the south. Okay, so, um, that, the leggards, they will have a comb that's pretty tall and sometimes it falls over. Well, those combs are susceptible to frostbite. frostbite. Uh, we don't have to worry about frostbite down here. I mean, every once in a while in the winter, we'll get down to 27, 25, maybe mm -hmm. 21. Uh, but it's usually one night, maybe two nights, but it usually warms back up during the daytime. And if they can get in a sunny spot, they'll be fine. But uh, frostbite, you have to worry about frostbite. So yeah, It's just like our extremities are susceptible to frostbite. So that's an extremity that's not protected. So their combs are susceptible their combs. <laughs> okay, so uh, temperament. Uh, nobody loves a fussy chicken. Ooh, or an angry chicken. No. Uh, there are, uh, especially roosters. Roosters get this thing, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the king of the coop. And you go in there and you turn your back on that rooster, he's going he's gonna to nail you. Well, they don't hurt, but he's trying his best to show you that he's boss. It usually just takes me off, and so I have to set them straight and show them that they aren't the king of the roost that I am. <laughs> so, um, and some chickens are just naturally scared of you. No matter what you do, no matter how much time you spend with them, they they want to run and fly and We're get away from you. you. And you have them in a coop, and you show up, they're just bouncing off walls. So, which is bad. So if you're trying to clean the coop or yeah, they're or, all over or deal, you know, then they're just everywhere, and that's that's yeah. that's not good. And I have found some of the larger the larger the breed, the more docile they are. Mm -hmm. So you know, like the 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 um, uh, buff Orpingtons. Those the, cinnamon queens were really sweet. They yeah, were they, real mild mannered cool. and cool. They were just they were very nice. They, a lot of them will just just about eat out of your hand. Uh, and there's some breeds that are better in confinement mm -hmm. than others. Some of them are naturally wanting to be outside. You, if you were to take a, a, the um, game hens, like the ones that they use for fighting, take those hens, they're better off outside. You just let them go, and they'll be sleeping in the trees at night. Right. And, and they're, they're real flighty, and they, they'll, they, don't like, they really don't like confinement. Um, Some chickens are lazier than others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they don't want to get out and work too hard at finding any anything so uh, to eat. So, therefore, some are better foragers than others. Right. So, so if you're wanting them just to range, free range, understand that some will do that, will be better at that than others. Exactly. So, the other... And, you, if you want to free range them, you don't want to get some that's going to go out and scratch for about 10 minutes and then go back and lay down and wait for you to feed them. Right. Uh, that's not going to work in our farm. Uh, now, each breed, the, the growth ratios are not the same. I, I mentioned a while ago that the Jersey Giants are slower to mature. Um, so if you bought you some Jersey Giants and, and in five months you wanted eggs, you're going to have to wait another couple of months. Because they, they they just take that much longer to mature, and they're a bigger breed. Mm -hmm. It's one of the largest breeds, uh, not the largest. They're called Jersey Giants for a reason. Right. And there's blacks and there and there's whites, and there may be some other colors. Now, a lot of these breeds, uh, there are different colors of those breeds. You know, like you get into the Cochins, there's silver, there's black, there's white, there's brown, there's gold, there's partridge. I mean, they have people. That's when she gets into saying there's hundreds. Uh, when you start splitting them up into that kind of gap categories, there's there's tons of them. There's there's white, black, blue, gray, right. silver, partridge, partridge. I don't know. There's a bunch. Uh, silkies. Just silkies, yeah. J just in the silkies. So you you get all these different varieties of the same breed, and so uh, like. Uh, but anyway, the maturity rates are all different in 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 uh, in, in the breeds. There there are some Egyptian. Fayumis. Say that three times. No. Why not? 
Filmies. Filmies. Three times. Film me, film me, film me. Film me, film me. I'm filming you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, those will those those from start to finish uh, to to start laying is I think only about four and a half, maybe five months. Wow. But they're small breed. Small egg. And they're flooding. And they're flooding. And they're small egg. And that's another thing. It, it depends on uh, what breed, you know, when we're talking about what breeds work for you. What size is what I mean, you want large eggs? You want brown eggs? You want white eggs? You want right. small eggs? Bunch of eggs? It's about half of our eggs every day are small and the other half are large yeah. because we have, that's, that's how our flock is divided up. So we, and they all eat the same to me. But if your recipe calls for a large egg, I guess it matters. Chicken. Let's talk about the morphology. A chicken. <laughs> a chicken. A fake chicken. Let's talk about the morphology or anatomy of a chicken. Because that's one thing that um, I really... I've watched a lot of chicken videos and haven't seen a lot that just explain all the parts. And I'm a science teacher, so that's important to me. The outside parts, the inside parts... Um, you know, I want to diagram, draw, and label, and color it, and all that. So, um, so a chicken, of course, let's start up here so they have a beak, right? Um, when they're baby chicks and, and hatching out of the egg, they have a special little um, tool on the end of that beak that allows them to break out of the egg, and that's really cool, and then it goes away. Um, so their beak is there. Do they have teeth? Yes, they do, actually. Not in the beak? No. Okay, so we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> No, they do not have teeth. They don't not have like teeth. we have teeth. Not like we have teeth, but they do have grinders, and so um, so it's in a different place. So the beak, of course, eating with, and then this is the comb, and the comb will look different on different kinds there of are, chickens. Um, there are four or five different kinds of tom combs. Comb. Uh, the single comb, like most pictures that people see of a chicken, has a single comb. Looks like a mohawk. Like she show you what it looks like. <laughs> See, <laughs> I told you she'd show you. And then there's the the rose comb, like the Hamburgs have, which work better in the colder climate because it's it's uh, it's more flat mm -hmm. and it's kind of wavy, and it comes to a peak at the back, uh, kind of like a mohawk, but um, but it's flat. And in the colder climates, they don't get frostbite as bad. And then there's uh, the V. There's a Sicilian buttercup chicken that has a V shaped. Oh, yeah. Um, comb. And there are people, especially in the uh, cockfighting in industry, that will can go in and just clip those combs completely off. Yeah. So that can be done. I don't do it because I don't want to mess with it. So I'm lazy. I'm a lazy chicken farmer. And, and it doesn't matter whether they're a chicken or a rooster. Both of them can have combs. Right. Right. All right and then this is the waddle. What's it for? Yeah. <laughs> it's to make you say, hey, that's a chicken. <laughs> it's ornamental, just like the comb, I'm assuming, and it just has to do with just the breed. Probably has more to do with mating than than anything else, you know? That sounds good to me. I, I Usually any of the ornamental morphological features have to do with mating most of the time. Or warning. Warnings or matings. And sometimes both. Okay, so this part um, is this is where the hackle feathers are. And the hackle feathers are going to look different. That's one way to tell a rooster from a hen. The hackle feathers are usually longer and thinner and more pronounced on the rooster than they are the hen. So when you start trying to figure out, do I have a rooster or a hen, um, if you can't tell any other way, and the uh, other ways tail feathers or just the... If you've got two of them together and they're trying to spur each other, yeah, they're roosters. But that's, that's the easiest way to tell. But Because um, we have two little black The reason silkies. she's bringing this up because a three-month-old hen and a three-month-old rooster, sometimes you can't tell them apart. They look exactly they the same. Look, they look a lot alike. So after about the fourth month and maybe on into the fifth month, they begin to put on their, their physical features. And uh, now there's a way at birth. Oh, yeah. That, when it's hatched, that you can sex the chick. Uh -huh. And there are people who do that. They're trained they're professionals. Yeah, they work at these hatcheries and stuff, and they'll stick their thumb in the abdomen area. And what if they do this, they do that, or whatever, then they know which, which sex it is. And they're probably about 99% sure. 
correct mm -hmm. all the time. I can't do that. I've never perfected it. I've tried it before, and all I did was make the chick hurt. So <laughs> I don't like to. I'm not a chick abuser. So, so we just wait until till they tell us who they are. Yeah, they let we wait till they are cockadoodle doing and then <laughs> or laying an egg. Then we know, hey, that <laughs> rooster laid an egg. So then these are the saddle feathers, and that's just what that's called. And then the tail feathers, and then a rooster, the tail feathers are going to curl. Um, more, they're gonna be longer, more pronounced, and they'll curl, curl. Whereas a chicken's tail feathers are just gonna be they're shorter. They're just kind of fanned out and fan straight. out a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So those will look different. Um, so on to the the legs and the toes, and like we said, on on what you think of a chicken, those regular chickens are gonna have uh, four toes. A uh, bantam will have five. And a rooster will grow a spur on the back, and that's for protection, and that's what that. And some means. of the some of the roosters naturally grow a long spur. I've seen some spurs almost two inches long. Wow! And they will poke a hole in you. They will get you on the leg, and they can poke seriously. They can hurt you. They can hurt you. That's why you don't want a mean uh, mean rooster around. There there are ways that you can uh, cut those off, get rid of them, mm -hmm. and then some roosters that they just make a little nubbing, and yeah. they don't ever get very long and it's it has a lot to do with the breed right and on the inside um of course they have a lot of the same anatomical features that we have on the inside they have a heart which is good to eat uh they have a liver which is also good to eat um but they have a gizzard and this is where their teeth are found okay. it's not really teeth it's it's dirt it's it's uh rocks yeah or rocks grit and grit uh, so that that's when i say that they have teeth that's what their teeth are it's just rocks they, they scratch around in the dirt, and they will actually eat rocks, uh, small rocks. Uh, well, I had one actually eat, um, after I bushed it, I found out it had eaten a ink pen end. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> so they'll eat But them. anyway, they'll, they'll eat those things. And that's what goes into their crawl. Which is spelled crop. But if you're from the south, it's a crawl. <laughs> Say that with me. Crawl. crawl. <laughs> and and you'll see they when they're eating their They'll whole get big. their whole chest just just gets full, and, and so that's what's grinding up. I mean, so so the gizzard they have these rocks and stuff in these gizzards. Now, if you go to one of our YouTube videos, you'll see mm -hmm. us butcher where we actually butcher some chickens or some roosters, and we show you what's actually inside of that gizzard mm -hmm. and how to process that gizzard. But it's rocks, and and, and it just grinds up, and it's constantly moving inside it's of that gizzard. It's just a super muscular organ that grinds up. So the food, when they're eating it, is just going to collect in this crawl in the front, but it's spelled crawl, and then it's going to move through the stomach. Um, <laughs> through and through the gizzard, and uh, that's that's part of the digestive system. Is that is that the craw and the stomach and the gizzard are all digestive system organs, and so that that are a little bit different from what because um, so the stomach is not as important. I'm sure it still has the important digestive juices and all that, but the craw the craw is a holding station, and then the gizzard is the grinding station, and so that's a little bit different. Um, I think that's all that's cool about a chicken, so you kind of understand how they work. <laughs>